and welcome back to another episode of the Storybook Skeins podcast. Now, if you've noticed, perhaps, that um, things are a little bit different, and uh, I had put up a few episodes, and I kind of took them down, and I wasn't going to do them, but I still really want to share. It just, I was hoping to do it more on a weekly basis, and that just seems like a little bit too much, or maybe that I just don't have enough to say on a weekly um, sort of schedule, so I thought I would try something new and do kind of a monthly update. So then there's a lot more content and a lot more of the actual um, knitting and the making and that sort of thing. Um, so I hope that you will join me in this. So if you are new here, like I said, I'm Kendra and um, during these episodes I really hope to share some of the things I've been working on. I really hope it's not going to be too noisy, but we'll do our best. Um, this sort of podcast is all about knitting and spinning and some sewing and crochet and just other general making. So I want this to be a monthly record of what I've been working on and hope that it is of interest to some of you. So I haven't done this for a while and I've got quite a lot to share, so let's just jump right in. The first project I hope to share with you was done more than a month ago, but I haven't shared it really anywhere, so I thought I would start by doing it here. Um, it is the Offhand Lace Shawl by Caitlin French. Um, I had dyed this yarn. This is a Dale Garn Falk yarn. No. It's a super wash wool. No. It's a super simple pattern. It was just a really fun one no. to work on. No. No. I'm really happy with how the color looks. It's green with some really nice pops of uh, blues and magenta and a few other colors in there as well. My next project to share was out of the same yarn, and if you recall, I, f I think it was on the first episode, I had shared that um, I found a big collection of this Dale Garn Falk yarn at Value Village, and so I picked up quite a lot of it, and I've been kind of dyeing it and using it here and there in other projects. I am almost all the way out of it, um, but I have some more um, and made a my first brioche project. This is the Pearl Ho Soho Brioche Cowl, um, and with the, with the pattern there's also a hat, although I didn't make that one. So I dyed up a couple different colors for this. It has this kind of midnight color as the background on the right side, which is um, different shades of navy and black, and a nice dark, but with a little bit of kind of tonal variation in there. And then I used two different colors. Um, along the other side. There's a one that's a little bit more blue based and one that's more green based, kind of similar to my other um, shawl there, but a little bit different and there's some little flecks of other colors in it as well. And I'm so happy with my first, for being a first brief project, I starting to really understand what people say about it being super squishy. It just has, just feels springy and fun. I think this one might end up being gifted, but I thought I'd show it to you in case of interest. So it's long enough to go double and I think it's generally pretty a versatile um, kind of scarf to wear and we have long winters here so a lot of neck wear is a good thing. So in the last few months I have gotten into spinning as well and so I'm going to share the spinning with the knitting because it's been long enough that I've kind of spun the yarn and then used it. So I'll kind of share um, both steps when I have some yarn left. So uh, in the winter I had made my first drop spindle and unfortunately um, the disc part had broken and so I was kind of halted as far as what I wanted to do or what I was going to do but I kind of explained what a drop spindle was to my dad and he went ahead and made me a few different options so the dowel and a lit in his lathe and so I've had lots of fun using them I think some of them might get painted but so far they're all just natural wood so I've been doing some of that. You can see I'm out of fiber right now, so I don't have pretty much anything on the go at the moment. But when I got that, I was also given from my mom, she had a bag of just fluffy fiber, and it's an unknown, it wasn't marked, not sure what it was, but this is the yarn it spun into. It's browns with gray. And I went, I took, this is what I have left. I had more than this and made a Atmar cap. The pattern is by Tin Can Knits. And you can see it there. So yeah, that was kind of my first project that I made on uh, these new drop spindles. So after working on these drop, new drop spindles, I actually found a spinning wheel for $50 on a local garage sale site. 
and I went and picked it up and it's I it needed a few little tweaks the drive band needed replacing but once it was all kind of tightened up it was ready to go and I have been so happy with it and was able to knit enough for a sweater the lady I bought it from said that her grandmother or her mother had brought it um, to Canada from Germany in World War II and so it's definitely an older style and I was a little bit worried that if something wasn't working that uh, it would be hard to find replacement parts. But looking at it, it's such kind of a simple, um, simple mechanism and simple tool. I think I'd be able to even make some myself or I have people in the family who would be able to help make some replacement parts if I needed to. Although again, I've been really happy that it has just jumped right into working and um, seems to be working really well. So I wanted to jump back in with some of the wool that I had picked up or had left over from Custom Woolen Mills. I had quite a bit uh, that I that was really reasonably priced. It was Polypay was the breed, which I had never heard of and feels a little bit more, you know, wooly or rustic or whatever it may be. Um, but I wanted to use as good practice. So I dyed a quite a large quantity up. I purchased a pound to start with and um, from there had spun it and I don't have too much of it left. I ended up actually plying it with um, a wool mohair blend, just a really thin, a light fingering that I had on hand. And so it made, a, with the, the single, it made it more of a DK weight. And I had two colors of that. And so I went ahead and after spinning it all, I made a flax sweater out of it. So here's my flax sweater. If you're familiar with the pattern, also by Tin Can Knits, it has some garter along the sleeves and then it's just a pretty basic stockinette pullover. So I'm really happy with how all the color plays together and I really like it's got um, the bow hair really adds some softness to it and I'm really happy with kind of how that um, plying worked together and also in the finished product. So, so far it has been way too warm to wear it, but I'm really look forward, looking forward to when it gets cooler and um, being able to put it on from then. I also had some of that wool that I had dyed up um, when I was using my first drop spindle when it broke and I was kind of halted with it. And so I have, um, I just had it sitting, I hadn't started making a project with it yet, but decided to use up um, not only this wool, but the leftovers from my sweater. And I made another, scarf kind of again similar color palette but it's just the colors I like so figure might as well go with it so this started off as a coffee shop wrap which was a, is a pattern by Alexandra Tavel and I kind of altered it a little bit as I was going I wanted to include some of my um, the first color I just faded them through and then so I, I decided to cast off and I put a roll of a row of treble crochets even though it was a knit garter scarf and then picked back up into the knitting after that. And I'm really happy with the effect. Um, it's I guess not often that you see patterns that kind of alternate between the knitting and the crocheting but I think it works pretty well. I think I've got it on the wrong way but you can see how it looks. <clears throat> So again, this is super wooly and will be great once it gets cold out, but is a little too much for right now. My last knitting project to share is kind of a long work in progress as a fingering weight sweater. And to be honest, the yarn choice was kind of inspired by Laura at Tiny Human Knits podcast. She, in one of her recent episodes, was wearing a uh, tank top that she had knit using wool like, which is just a Michaels uh, acrylic fingering weight yarn, and I think she had held hers double to make a DK weight. Anyways, I was surprised how nice it looked, and I've used wool like in the past for other things, and it's quite soft and is very reasonably priced. I, I think it's about $4 a ball here where I am, and so I picked up a couple balls and started a new sweater project. This is the Risen Sweater by Melanie Berg. I'm knitting mine in gray. Might be a little hard to tell here. It's just a top down raglan with a really interesting collar detail. And it has um, a simple cabling along the, um, right before you put the, the hem on and at the sleeves. So it's making pretty good progress so far. I am about, I don't know, halfway between the underarm and the hem. And I'm just continuing working on this as kind of a work of love, a little at a time, and um, just lots of stock in it right now. I'm knitting this sweater on my size 5, it's a boy or boil needles. They are an interchangeable set that I have got a ton of use out of, 
And actually, just this time as I was putting them on, I noticed they were getting a bit of a ridge at the join. So I went ahead and used a Dremel to smooth it out. And I am surprised by how well it worked because they're just like new again. They are tight and smooth, which is exactly what I wanted. So actually while I was dremeling, I thought I would give a little bit of attention to the tips. So I actually sharpened these up. I felt a little weird, like I was making a weapon, but it worked surprisingly well. I want to do maybe some of the others. They could even stand to be a bit sharper, but I didn't want to go too crazy and not be able to use them. But yeah, they're still really smooth and glidey and they pick up stitches great and they're just a little bit sharper now. <clears throat> So that's all the knitting that I have to share today. I did want to mention a little bit or share a bit of dyeing, general dyeing, um, not just yarn with you today. I have really enjoyed dyeing fabric and more specifically woven wraps in the past. Uh, on this channel previously, I have shared some tutorial videos on doing so, but I've been really interested in the confetti dyeing, which has become pretty popular. And I wasn't really sure how to do it, so I just gave it a try. And I have to say, I'm not, it didn't turn out the way I expected, but it's still really fun. This is a Secure Bloom uh, linen ring sling. I had picked it up on a local garage sale site, so I didn't have a lot invested or anything. But I tried to do kind of this like swoosh of color that would um, be at the top where the child or the baby sits and then come through the tail. And so it has a lot of different colors. There was a lot of color splitting, and I think I just used more dye than necessary to make it more speckly. It started off a lime color, and I'm really surprised by how, um, how, how much coverage there was. And part of that may have just been that I was doing it outside and there was a bit of wind that was blowing some of the color around. But after I did this, I wanted to give it another try. And so I used a Gildan white t-shirt. I just picked this up at Michael's when they were having a sale a while ago and uh, tried the speckling again. And so I was going for a heavier speckle at the bottom and then going lighter as it goes up. And I think it's turned out, has a really fun effect on here. I'm pretty happy with how it is and I've been enjoying wearing it. <clears throat> Another making item to share with you is a cross stitch. I haven't done a lot of cross stitching lately, or really at all, period, but I have done some larger pieces in the past with this design. I actually found the picture. It was on, it was called a free vector by free picks. Um, not really sure, but it showed where all the X's were. So I just translated that into a stitch fiddle file and I changed up the houses and um, flowers just to more accurately represent my house. So there's the house garage and kind of where we have our garden area. So I have this cute little um, frame set up by where I wash dishes and it's just a nice reminder um, to be happy to be home. We have moved um, away from our house this year and we just came back. It seemed like a fun little um, project to kind of remember the time away and um, just to be thankful to be back as well. So that's just another quick stitching project that was a lot of fun to make. The last project I wanted to share was this bench that I refinished. Um, this was a wrought iron bench that came with our property, it was in the garden, and all the boards were totally rotted and uh, kind of falling apart, it was seeming a little bit dangerous, uh, so I just one day decided I wanted to um, do something with it. So I took it apart and took a look at the boards and pretty much all of them were just rotted beyond use. So I packed up the kids and we went to the hardware store and I picked up some supplies, um, a new board and things like that, and got to um, cutting the pieces and painting them, sanding and painting and putting it back together. And I'm just really happy with how this turned out. I have used some of the tools um, in the past, but mostly alongside my husband. And this was my first, like, I felt like my own project of um, being able to do kind of the figuring myself and seeing uh, what size of everything I needed and how to do things and um, yeah, it was just really fun and I think it was a really fun result. So now I might need to take on some more building projects. I'm not sure if that's something anyone here is really interested in if you're watching um, the knitting content, but in my mind it kind of takes up some of the same creativity and um, just some of the same uh, creating brain space, if you will. <laughs> um, I like to think that I need to be making something every day or working on something at least every week um, just to kind of maintain a sense of myself. And um, really the building projects took some of the same um, thought process, maybe you could say, as the fiber related things. So I'm just a new avenue to do some of that. 
Anyways, that is what I have to share today. Thank you for sticking with this and listening through to the end. Um, like I say, I really hope that this is at least monthly, maybe every two weeks depending on what's going on, but um, yeah, monthly at least, so I have some content to share with you. I really wanted to be more focused on um, both the process and the product of what I'm making rather than um, just on, you know, buying yarn and things like that, which is fun for other people. Um, people like watching that. I like watching it sometimes, but I don't really buy a lot of yarn, so maybe not so fun here. <laughs> But I do like the making. So I hope that that is of interest to you as well. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and um, so that you'll see when a new video is posted. I do hope to be making some more just um, videos of other content here on my channel, uh, which may or may not be of interest to you. But if you feel like sticking around, that would be great. Please feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you're working on, if you've tried any of these patterns, and um, yeah, just say hello. I'd love to meet you in the comments. Until next time, bye-bye.